Greetings, I am Dr. Jamel D. Carter, President and CEO of the Cannabis Consulting Group, where we are a full service management and educational consulting practice where we assist organizations like yours align human capital with organizational strategy. We have a variety of services available to you and your team, such as executive coaching, human resources and organizational development consulting, market research, intensive boot camps such as nonprofit formation, business growth, grant writing, fundraising and development. In addition, we offer growth circles, intimate groups for leaders to come together for professional development, peer encouragement and up-to-date best practices and research. Join a growth circle today. We have growth circles for CEOs, entrepreneurs, pastors, executive directors, and educational leaders. This is season two, episode four of the Cannabis Consulting Group's Executive Edge podcast, your source for encouragement, news, information, and commentary, all designed to assist Christian leaders and executives such as yourself thrive in both life and career. I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. If you like what you hear, and if you're unable to wait for our weekly podcast, I recommend you sign up for one of our alerts and receive breaking news in the world of higher education, nonprofits, business, entertainment, leadership, politics, health, biotech, and pharmaceuticals. To do so, you can call our offices at one 800 4185350 the number once again 1-800-418-5350 in addition you can follow me on facebook twitter instagram and parlor my handle is at dr jd carter that is at sign d r j d carter c a r t e r as we do every week we're going to open up in a word of devotion, uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today knowing that you are an awesome God. We thank you for shining your light upon us and our families all week long. We pray for familial relationships. Lord, we're praying that you will unite pa uh, uh, husbands and wives, that you will assist children in becoming obedient, uh, that you will walk alongside blended families and that you will heal those that are suffering from unresolved issues from childhood trauma. Lord, we're praying that you will touch the finances and wealth of your people. We speak career progression, bring new and returning customers and clients to those that are working on commission, those whom are business owners as well as entrepreneurs. Lord, our prayers that this will be a season of raises and promotions. We call for debt cancellation and debt forgiveness in the lives of your people. Lord, bring your children into spiritual growth and maturity. Uh, Lord, our prayer is that you will send revival, that you will renew, that you will refresh, that you will awaken purpose, passion, and motivation in the lives of your people. In Christ's matchless name, we seal this prayer. Amen. Our devotional uh, scripture text is coming from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verses 21 to 23, as well as Acts chapter 9, uh, verse 31. I will be reading from the King James translation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 21 through 23 reads, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Acts 9.31 reads, So the church throughout the whole of Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace, and was edified, growing in wisdom, virtue, and piety, and walking in the respect and reverential fear of the Lord and in the consolation and exhortation of the Holy Spirit continued to increase and was multiplied. 
Most of us never recognize opportunity until it goes to work in our competitor's business. That is a quote from P.L. Andar. And Ronald E. Osborne said, undertake something that is difficult. It will do you good. Unless you try to do something beyond what you have already mastered, you will never grow. Our theme for our devotion on this week is it's all yours. The portion of text we have read from 1 Corinthians is concerned with pointing the church toward the path of wisdom. There are many today in pursuit of wisdom. We see this through those seeking college admission, graduate degrees, professional development programs, the uh, countless amount of money that's spent on workshops, seminars, conferences, and audio books. Worldly wisdom and philosophy is useless in the eyes of God. True wisdom is found in a relationship with Christ. Paul, who wrote 1 Corinthians, was in such a space prior to his conversion on the road to Damascus. Uh, when we get to Acts, the 20 uh, Acts, uh, I believe that's Acts chapter 9, verses 20 to 31. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul shows, it shows Paul going from a persecutor of the church to one who persecuted the church as a member, uh, from going from a persecutor of the church to one that was persecuted, there we go, as a member of the church. Once God converted Saul, later known as Paul, he began to preach persuasively and converted many to uh, the faith. And this amazed many as well. His sermons and giftings led the church to increasing and multiplying. Many boast and find, famil uh, and find famil uh, fulfillment, my goodness, my mouth is really dry today, in their credentials, their income, their standing and job titles. Most of this is worthless without having a relationship with Christ. A degree does not guarantee your success. Many have obtained credentials, but have failed in life. Some have been afforded the opportunity to earn a six-figure six figure salary, while on the other hand, being laid off with an email. You don't have to seek to or depend on anyone outside of Christ. It's important to understand that Christ is your source. Promotion and elevation come from him. While others may experience a drought, as believers, you should expect to continue to increase and multiply in the Lord. For there is no lack in Christ. There is no stagnation in Christ. As believers, we grow and expand. We see God's grace in many areas of our life. Uh, if you are a believer, you should see him in your marriage, in your career, in your health. When we walk in reverence of the Lord, we should see virtue increase. Holiness should also increase. Hope should increase in our lives as well as joy. As a child of God, it's important to remember that all is yours. I hope this truth has encouraged you. It is my prayer that you continue to grow in your relationship with your creator. Spend time in both prayer and study daily and watch his presence and favor manifest in your life. Moving to the world of business, there were several stories uh, that I would like to highlight for you in case you missed them. Uh, the first one is the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's uh, confirmation hearing was before the U.S. Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. Uh, this uh, confirmation hearing made headlines because there were a couple of, of takeaways that came out of his testimony. Uh, Powell indicated he thought the U.S. economy was healthy and in need of tighter monetary policy. What that means, he further went on to explain that he expects a series of interest rate hikes this year, along with other reductions in the extraordinary help the Fed has been providing as a result of the pandemic error. 
uh, era. So what that means is that there is going to be some increases in um, interest rates. And all of this is done. And and I guess you can say in the capacity or the desire to decrease the level of inflation that we have been experiencing as a nation. So you're going to see changes in our monetary policy here in the United States. Also, what crossed the wire on today, shares of Albertson, Kroger, and Walmart fell as investors worried that Omicron fueled worker shortages and supply chain delays will hurt these major grocers. The Albertson CEO, Vivek Sankaran, said on an earnings call that the latest spike in COVID cases has delayed the recovery to more typical levels. Uh, What we're seeing is that the Omicron variant has exasperated worker shortages in nearly every industry from airlines to restaurants. And this has resulted in many empty shelves uh, as many have returned to supermarkets. U.S. Judge James Bogsberg granted the Federal Trade Commission a check in, a second chance to challenge Facebook, Facebook now Meta on antitrust grounds, and this is a result of uh, what is believed to be illegal monopolization. As a result, shares of Facebook uh, barely moved on the news and were positive all day. Uh, Johnson and Johnson, the biggest pharmaceutical company in the United States. Uh, this is based on market cap, announced uh, their plans to split off its consumer business into a separate publicly traded company by November 2023. And so there are some people that see this as a risk. Others say that this may be beneficial to Johnson & Johnson. Uh, It'll be interesting to see uh, how it turns out. I will say some of the benefits when you can split things off, you're making your organization a lot more nimble and flexible. The larger an organization is, it becomes difficult uh, for that organization to move uh, in terms of strategy wise. And I think you're looking at this in terms of how some of the organizations are handling this pandemic. Uh, some of the smaller companies that do, that are a little flatter have been able to move forward and adjust to uh, changes in the environment as opposed to some of these larger bureaucratic organizations that have found it to be very difficult uh, to be nimble and flexible in our current uh, environment. Uh, Moving to a business growth principle strategy or best practice, I would like to discuss workforce planning. And why I want to discuss workforce planning is because I feel, and for those of you that do not know what workforce planning is, it is the systematic process uh, for identifying and addressing the gap between the workforce today and the human capital needs for an organization tomorrow. Looking at what's happening with our current shortages in terms of employees, I think it shows and indicates that many organizations fail to properly forecast their human capital needs. We see this as a result of losses in productivity that's going on. Uh, We're also seeing high employee turnover as a result of the great resignation and a high number of employees that have elected to retire due to the pandemic. And I think what we see here is the failure to link workforce planning to the strategic planning of many organizations. If organizations want to thrive, they must link their workforce plan to their strategic plan. Some may say, well, there no one could have predicted uh, that we would have experienced uh, such a wave of uh, 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 COVID followed by the various variants. The one thing that I will say we all knew for quite some time that organizations needed to have succession plans in place. We also see here that many organizations, because of their failure to have succession plans in place, when people retire, this has contributed to some of the worker shortages 
uh, that I think we're seeing throughout this nation as well, because people were unprepared. If you're planning, you need to plan for every possible outcome that may uh, hit your organization. There are tons of possibilities out there. And true planners have scenarios for uh, worst case scenarios, as well as base, uh, best case scenarios to every potential activity uh, that may fall upon their organization. Every day, there are establishments that close their doors never to reopen. Why does this happen? Many of these organizations lack the ability to read their data. They fail to measure and predict performance. They fail to implement solid strategy built around key performance indicators. Do you know when you need to act? What does your predictive analytics suggest for this month? Month, will you hit your targets? If you are unsure, our team of experts can work with your leaders to develop dashboards that will show you how your company is performing in real time. The Canis Consulting Group has a team of well-trained coaches and consultants with C-suite experience that are available to assist you and your leadership team. All of us, all of us need assistance every now and then. And so we want you to allow us to assist you in aligning your human capital with organizational strategy. Now is not the time to hire an amateur. Get the results you deserve. Bring in our team of experts and allow us to help bring your plans into focus. For more information or a no fee consultation, please call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. That number, once again, 1-800-418-5350. Moving to the worlds of both uh, health and education, uh, one of the things that came out today, Medicare will restrict coverage for Biogen's controversial, controversial Alzheimer's treatment to only patients who take part in a rigorous clinical trial. The federal government announced today, the decision is likely to keep the drug low if finalized later, uh, uh, dr drug usage low if finalized later this year. Uh, this is interesting because we saw that the FDA approved this uh, drug last June and it's now being sold as I do helm. And one of the things I think what we're seeing here is government agencies at odds with one another. So we have the FDA doing one thing. We are having here Medicare doing another thing. And I think this is, you know, political maneuvering. You would think in a, a government uh, that two agencies will be able to coexist and work together, utilizing the same data to come to uh, essentially what we have here, uh, different agencies using the same data coming to different uh, outcomes in terms of the safety of the drug. Uh, I also think something that should be explored is what else could be behind this decision. I think when you have people in leadership positions that are making these types of decisions, it's always beneficial to understand how these individuals are investing. Can someone be gaining something as a result of not allowing uh, Medicare to cover this uh, potential treatment uh, for patients? I'm not saying that that is the case, but I think this, this is something that we'd always be willing to question. A uh, 23andMe has won clearance for a direct-to-consumer genetic test on a hereditary prostate cancer marker. This marks the third FDA clearance 23andMe has obtained uh, for a cancer risk report clearance. This is a great uh, possible investment uh, in terms of uh, in terms of 23andMe, as there are a lot of people that are seeing the benefits of understanding how one's genetic code can mark potential diseases one may. Uh, be predisposed to. Uh, in terms of education, Ohio State University announced it would drop a key facet of its partnership with software vendor Workday, abandoning plans to become a high-profile early adopter 
of the company's cloud-based student information system product, Workday Student. One of the things I think when you're looking at a research innovation being first to market, being a first adopter, uh, many of these projects include or mean high risk for both vendors and potential clients. Uh, definitely when you're up, upgrading uh, 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 technological system, it can be difficult. One of the things, if you've ever took part in uh, upgrade or transition or migration to a new system, one of the things that you will find is that many times vendors will promise you the world only to not deliver on the things they have promised. I commend Ohio State University from, from backing out of this deal as quickly as they did, because if they would have waited, they would have lost more money. And eventually you have what some people call escalation of commitment. You have invested so much money in a potential outcome that may not come that you're refusing to pull out. I commend Ohio State from having set a, a red line that appears to have been crossed and they have backed out of this potential partnership. Job well done uh, to those at, uh, at Ohio State University that have made this decision. Georgetown College in Kentucky appointed Rosemary Allen, who has been a former provost as well as dean at the college to serve as the college's 26th president. Rosemary will be the Baptist College's first female president. Congratulations. Uh, I hope, uh, I wish her the best as well as the institution as they move forward to navigate these uh, very dynamic waters uh, in which we are currently operating in. In terms of book recommendation, the book recommendation I have for you this week uh, is the following book. You may have seen it. Uh, it is entitled Crisis Management, uh, Planning for the Inevitable, and this is by Stephen Fink. I find this to be a good book, and there are some things that I think, uh, as you read, it will reveal to you. The first thing you'll find is that the last two years has revealed both excellence and failure in leadership. Now, this is not covered in this particular book, but I think one who has read this book can walk away with this. Uh, with this understanding. And the second is the current pandemic has provided numerous case studies uh, showing both best practices and poor crisis management. We have seen it from all areas of our society, uh, from government agencies to multinational businesses to nonprofits and non-governmental organizations. Uh, we have seen so many fail to manage our current uh, crisis in terms of the pandemic we find ourselves in. Uh, moving to the world of church and nonprofits, uh, nonprofits are targets and they sit vulnerable to cyber attacks. Uh, little or no money has been spent on cybersecurity for nonprofit organizations. And, like, uh, and part of it is because they lack uh, human, financial, and technological resources to build a strong firewall against such attacks. Uh, as a result, it, it is believed that many nonprofits need to invest heavily in uh, their technological infrastructure in order to be able to sustain a cyber attack. Uh, Dave Ramsey has come under fire for comments uh, he made suggesting that Christians who own property as landlords should not feel guilty about raising rental prices, uh, provided they aren't overcharging and they work with tenants in difficult situations. The exact quote uh, from uh, Mr. Ramsey was, I own rental property, single family homes. And if I raise my rent to, uh, to be market rate, that does not make me a bad Christian. I did not displace the person out of the house if they can no longer afford it. The marketplace did, the economy did. Uh, this is what Ramsey said. I, I know there are many ways in which one can look at this. If you're looking at it, uh, I guess you say as a free market quote and belief pattern and, and stewardship, 
Some may say Ramsey's uh, statement, even though harsh, is an accurate statement. Uh, others can say, you know, you're uh, essentially displacing people from a place to stay. Uh, we do see cost of living is increasing uh, in just about every state, every locality. We're seeing prices increase. Uh, but one of the things I, I think we should get back to is understanding uh, stewardship. And we have limited resources. A lot of people find themselves in poor financial situations because they have made poor financial decisions throughout the course of their lives. It's not that we give up on people or we want to move uh, people uh, in, in ways in which they can benefit from sound fi uh, fiscal and financial management and stewardship. Uh, but I, I definitely think that this is something that people have to make decisions on regularly. Uh, if you do not own property, you're someone's tenant. But we do know long-term wealth creation comes from ownership. So if you don't want to uh, be forced to adjust uh, in terms of how much is going out based on you know, your rent costs, it behooves us as believers to seek out and own property. Our, uh, Dave Ramsey is entitled to his opinion. And I will say, if you're someone who's leasing and renting from someone, uh, definitely you cannot tell them how much they could charge you. If you want to uh, turn the tables, you need to go out there and purchase property for yourself. In order to be able to purchase property, you have to make sound fiscal decisions. This means that you do not go wasting and blowing money on things that do not create value and wealth for your family. You have to make sound fiscal decisions in order to grow and sustain uh, your wealth uh, as a family and as a leader of matriarch or patriarch of your home. Strong donor relationships will be critical to the long-term sustainability of your nonprofit organization. Would your organization be able to benefit from a 20 to 25% increase in support this year? If so, our team of highly skilled fundraising and advancement consultants at the Candace Consulting Group can work with your team to assess your systems and assist you in developing a strategy that will get you back on track. For a no-fee consultation, please contact our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, that number, 1-800-418-5350. I hope you have found today's podcast to be informative encouraging and noteworthy. Once again, I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. Help us get the word out. I pray that the favor of God shines upon you and your organization this week. May clients come to you from the east, the west, the north, and the south. May you and your family go from blessings to greater blessings. Until next time, be blessed.